We're starting with three numbers. Now, can I remind you why three numbers always get used? Whether you're in simple interest or you're in compound interest, you need one of the three pieces. Have a look. Which one's which? What's the first one? That's the principal. Second one is? Yeah, you just move fast. Okay. Uh, we've got the interest rate. And then you've got your number of time periods down here. Okay. By the way, every time I say this, I'm going to try anyway, I'm going to say number of time periods. Don't fall into the trap of saying number of years because as you'll see in a minute, years isn't always what you're dealing with and I want you to think consciously. What is the time period? Is it this? Is it that? Don't just assume it's years. Now, two parts to this question. I'm actually doing one of the questions for you. First one that I've assigned. The first question is, what's the total amount at the end of the six years? Is that correct? Am I remembering the order of questions right? Total amount? Yes. So what we're going to do is, let's just start by quoting this guy, right? The compound interest formula begins, A equals, and I'm just going to write it down first. Okay. Now, I'm writing it down just as a mechanism for myself so that I don't have to remember and substitute at the same time, which I often mess up when I do two things at the same time, I just get confused. Okay? So now I can remember first and substitute second and separate those processes. So now I'm just going to fit what I need into the right spots. This is not complicated. So we've got them in order, in fact. 6,500 at the front. One plus, what would you like me to write for the rate? Zero. Okay, let's convert that. 0 0.07. And then the power is going to be 6. Now on your calculator, you've got a button for square, you've got a button for cubed. There is no set button for raise to the power of 6. So what you've got to go for is, on my calculator, which is most of yours, beside the square button, just to the right, you've got this button here. Which means you can fill in any power that you like. We're going to fill in 6. Okay, so once you do that, okay, so here's what I'm getting. Do I have any agreements? Yeah. Happy? Yeah? yeah? Okay, so that's not too complicated. And remember, this is not just some number flying out in the middle of nowhere. What I've calculated, I'm going to describe. It's the amount, okay? which is very important as I move to the next part of the question. If I'm remembering correctly, it asks, what's the interest? Okay. Now, the simple interest formula, it gives you interest right off the bat. But the compound interest formula does not. So we need a tiny bit of legwork to get there. What am I going to do? Fantastic. So I'm going to say I, interest, that's what I'm calculating right now. It's equal to what the total amount is after that six years has passed. And I'm going to subtract what I started with, which was the principal. Does that make sense? So this line here, there's not much complicated stuff in there, but it helps me know, oh, I see that you know what interest actually represents. It's the difference. It's how much it's increased by. Now I'll put some numbers in place. You happy? Have I crunched my numbers right? So, just like before, I've written down the three essential numbers. Can you help me recognize them again? First number up there, 8900. What is that? Principal. Second number, 3% per annum. That's the interest rate. And then you've got the two years, which is? So, we would normally designate this M. However, even though the compound interest formula and the simple interest formula, they only have three numbers in them, there's actually a fourth number that's hiding there, you just have to know how to interpret it. It comes in this phrase here that's right at the end of the question. Do you see it says compounded quarterly? Do you notice that? Yeah? Okay. And what does that mean? This actually changes what's happening. So off on the side here, I'd like you to write down with me, it's kind of like a parallel set of information I need to solve this question properly. They say compounded quarterly. So now even though it goes for two years, the number of years is not important. It's the number of quarters that matter. Now, I've chosen this because it's a fairly easy example. How many quarters in a year? Four. Four. So how many quarters in two years? 
Eight. 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 So instead of writing two years off on the side here, I'm going to write eight quarters. Okay. There are eight quarters. Eight times a quarter gives you two. That's the two years. So if I've got time periods in quarters, well, that means I need the interest rate, not per annum, but per quarter as well. So not only do I have to translate this number, I have to multiply that one by four. What do I do with this number? You don't get 3% every single quarter. That'd be amazing. What do you get? You get a quarter of that four times a year. Does that make sense? If you get 3% over the course of the entire year, then each quarter, they'll give you a quarter of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I want to work out what's a quarter of 3%. If I'm doing it right, I'm pretty sure it's 0.75%. Okay? Now that is per quarter. So what I've done is I've translated this question out of the numbers it had before into the numbers that really matter. The quarters, well, there's more of them, so I multiplied by four. The interest rate, you're getting less of it each time, so that's why I divided by four. So I divided by four to get to this, I multiplied by four to get to this. Okay, so now I'm going to write down my work here. A equals, just like before, I'm gonna write P outside of one plus R to the N. But I've got to be careful to use the right rate and the right number of time periods, okay? Principal out the front, that's still going to be 8,900. Now the rate. Again, just like before, I'm going to convert this into a decimal, but it's a bit tricky, right? How, am I, how many decimal points am I going to move this thing to, to turn it into a decimal? Two, right? So it's currently 0 0.75. So I'm going to move it two places. So it'll be 0, 0, 0075. Or alternatively, if you find looking at that a little bit confusing, you can just write 0.755%. That, that would work, but I prefer to convert the decimal. Okay. All right. What will my power be? How many quarters? Eight. And you're going to get a figure at the end. Okay, so let me see if I can beat you to it. $9,448.23. Agreement? Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Can I just point out for you, and if you've got another color, if you've got another color, I'd love for you to add this on. Um, this is really easy. What we just mentioned is really easy to mark up, right? There are two major points where people get confused. This thing here, they convert to the decimal incorrectly, right? So, for example, a lot of people will just write 0 0.75. They'll say, yeah, that's, that looks like a decimal to me, but it's 0 0.75 percent. It's a hundred times smaller than 0 0.75. So incorrect conversion is the first thing. Okay. The second thing is connected to these two numbers. Remember I said to you, two years, three percent, that's nice, but I don't want to use those numbers. I have to translate them into the right time unit, right? So they forget to translate. Okay. They leave it in years. Um, they'll just write down this instead. They'll write 8,900, the principal is the principal, and then they'll write this, 0 0.03 squared. Okay. Now, I'll just quickly go and compute that for you. I can tell you right now it's going to be less than our answer. It's on mine, 940, $9,442. So you're missing $6 off the end. Okay. Compounding more frequently, it earns you more money, which is why uh, banks these days pretty much they're all compounding every day. Okay. 